Hey guys, this is Thursday's video. This will be the last video of this week because as you can see on the schedule, polishing and concision are Friday, would be Friday's video. Um, I think I've done a pretty good job talking to you about concision and making that document specifically for this class, which you still have access to. So we are gonna help ease the burden of work and um, not have you watch a Friday video and that will give you a little bit more time to work on your op-ed paper which of course is due Friday at 11:59 p.m. what is due today however is the discussion 18 post which is the last peer editing we'll do in this class again it's just commenting on one positive thing one thing for revision for both of your um, classmates this video I'm pretty excited about. We've, we've talked a tiny bit about showing versus telling in this class, and we've talked more about introductions and conclusions. However, we're going to talk about these things in um, reference to just the op-ed paper. As you can see, we are entering revision week next week. Um, well, I'll probably do two videos, one to introduce the intro, the final portfolio on Monday, and then maybe one a little bit later, either Tuesday or Wednesday, to talk about proofreading strategies. And then you guys are just basically responsible for doing discussion 19 and 20, which will be posted at this Sunday at the latest, and then um, reading or referring to these pages in Jack. And just keep this deadline in mind. It will approach probably faster than you anticipate. Uh, Friday, June 23rd, the final portfolio is due, 11.59 p.m. So just keep all this in mind. And um, during week six, I will be more available to answer emails. So um, some of you I've had to respond a little slowly. I apologize for that. During week six, I will do my best to respond um, rapid fire so you can work on those revisions more quickly. Okay, so showing versus telling. We talked about kind of some tools to help you uh, show versus tell. So we want to show over just adding summary or telling the audience a thing. This is more helpful for storytelling or more um, opinionated pieces like the op-ed. It's also helpful um, more so in your real lives in terms of personal statements, cover letters, um, any kind of job application material. You won't be necessarily telling a story, maybe for personal statements. I actually worked with um, a couple of medical students this summer and some engineering students actually, and the committee is asking about a personal experience that has influenced um, him or her in the medical and engineering field. So like how can they tie their lives to um, their fields? And showing came into play um, way more than telling. So we'll look at a couple of examples and I'm going to show you an edited document of again that lifeguarding paper which I keep going back to because I feel like I worked so heavily with the student to improve that paper. So why don't we start there and then we will go to the showing telling document which of course I'll put on eCampus and then we'll look at um, the sorority woman introduction because it's a fantastic way to introduce your piece. I also work closely with this student and then we'll see what conclusions um, kind of pop up naturally. So for the lifeguarding paper, um, let's look at the edited version first. So this was what the student turned in upon her final for now and then what you guys, what I've shown you in other videos is the final version. So Again, all of the red lines are um, what she, so like she originally had imagine a gleaming sunny day by the water and I cross all that out and I just put sun. Again, this is to help um, avoid cliched language and to create a more creative, fragmented, interesting scene rather than summarizing what is happening in front of the um, character, aka you, in the scene, but really strive for um, style in this paper. And that will be in terms of the introduction and the conclusion more so than anything else. So the five hook types, just to remind yourself, are question, quote, strong statement, statistic or fact, and anecdote. So she chose to do an anecdote of a lifeguard again noticing a kind of perfect sunny day, and then um, something is wrong, someone has passed out, 
and the lifeguard jumps into action and then that arrives at her, her thesis statement which is of course lifeguards should receive higher wages because they must pay for their certification out of pocket and administer crucial life-saving care. So as you can see here, a lot of what I've cut is more toward um, concision and you can actually have fragments in an op-ed because it's a, again a less formal paper, it's more stylized, whereas in a scientific or more academic based research paper like the qualitative research paper, um, and the annotated bib and even the proposal fragments are considered mistakes and not stylistic. So just keep in mind genre and convention. And that's even something to start thinking about for your final reflective cover memo. Um, genres or conventions that you prefer and things about genres or conventions that are confusing to you, things that you learned about them, etc. Okay, so we have just sun, pool goers stretched out, stretched on lounge chairs evening out tan lines children off the diving boards into the deep end so again i've just cut out a lot of verbs um, to create help create images um, rather than actions so laughter and splashing make white noise pleasant a song and, and also surprising things so you all are familiar with cliches um, one of my one of the best students i had last semester she wrote about a um, graduation cap tossing scene and I was surprised was like student I can't say her name but student um, this is a cliched scene um, I have read plenty of these papers and also just think about like a romantic comedy which those are full of cliches there um, the reason why I'm asking you to avoid them and many other instructors or just any kind of quality writing would be asking you to avoid cliches is they're too comfortable and the whole purposes of, of the whole purpose of them is that they are familiar however they because they're so familiar they are easily ignorable or uh, the reader can pass over them easily so something like this which is stylistic kind of new um, fragmented this is um, something that would force the reader to pause and to try to piece together the scene themselves and um, create just basically an overall better introduction. This is one of the probably the best introductions for the op-ed that I've read. And also, if you notice which right off the bat, which is again, cliche, right off the bat, um, it's a much shorter, so it's a much more manageable length for a 700 to 1000 word op-ed paper. Okay, so that's for that. Let's look at the showing versus telling document very quickly. This is how I approach showing versus telling in um, the narrative paper for English 101 and then a refresher for English 102. I'm not sure if you if you did take 101, then hopefully you talked about something like this, like scene language, concrete versus abstract, or maybe you've taken a creative writing class and they've talked about these terms. Um, but so we're going to read this one really quickly and then I'm going to show you a different example and you guys think which one's showing, which one's telling. So they went to see New York. They went to New York to see cats. They both enjoyed it very much. When they tried to go home, their flight was delayed because of the snow. So they stayed another night and decided to see the musical again. We have this versus this. So I'll just read, um, the second I'll just read a little bit of the second paragraph starting here. The foyer was covered in gold and white marble with hundreds of people milling around in gowns and beautiful suits. He didn't talk much. Finally, they took their seats and the lights went down. He took her hand. Okay, so again, they're talking about inside the theater. Obviously, this one deals with showing and the other one deals with telling. So this would be, again, much more appropriate for something where you just want the answers. You want the finding, you don't want the kind of discussion about it or the um, enjoyment of the language. This here helps create a clearer scene for the reader. Um, you basically want to place the reader as closely as possible to your shoes. So the reader should be next to you in the scene at all times. And um, that, again, for the op-ed, is the most helpful in the introduction and the conclusion. You might mention, um, to take a pause from this, you might mention in the conclusion document that I had you read and Jack earlier that I referenced in a previous video, 
um, framing your paper, you can start with an image like, I don't know, a key or a kite or um, something else. And then you reference back to that very same image, but the image is portrayed in a new way by the end. One of my students was writing about the PRT, but she was comparing it to Disney's monorail. And so she, she described riding the monorail and everything beautiful in the park that she saw while um, on the monorail. And then she, at the end, she, she brought up the PRT against the image of the monorail again, and we could see kind of the deterioration and the sadness that surrounds the PRT, um, with that comparative. So that's just one way to frame it. You can frame it stylistically. So let's jump very quickly, um, to the other paper that I mentioned, the sorority woman paper, because this would be stylistic. She didn't frame it the same stylistically in her conclusion, but it is an option. So I like lists of things. I think that they are very compacted. Um, they're the, kind of the most concise way to convey information. Basically, this is a list and um, the lifeguard paper had a, like a list of images that led into a larger scene. So if you want to take that approach, that's completely fine. She had um, blonde, 100 pounds, partier, promiscuous, rich, rude, dumb, and self-centered. Who just came to your mind? If sorority girl is your answer, then you need to become educated on how a true sorority woman carries herself. So this student, first off, had a very clear understanding of the definition and what she wanted to argue in the paper, and that's kind of essential to its success. She said sorority woman is a term that she kind of adopted over sorority girl because sorority girl carries with it all of these stereotypes that she listed here. So she wasn't afraid. Um, well, we talked about this a lot and I said, why not just um, put in the beginning of the paper what the reader might be thinking and then undercut those expectations or at least acknowledge kind of the elephant in the room and then start talking about that elephant. So this, this helped her get more to the point. And then speaking of points, she had a lot of different angles she could have taken this, but her introduction was so long that I said, why don't you just put bullet points about your first um, three reasons why you're, ta you're arguing the term sorority woman over sorority girl. And um, because she had, she had a huge section for each one, and that was basically her whole paper in her introduction. So I said, just slim it down in the introduction and then elaborate on each one in your body paragraphs, and that's your entire paper. So again, she had first, second, third, very clear, stylistic, um, and it's consistent. That's why it works so well, because she is first, second, third, her grammar's on point, etc. How you would do it in terms of framing the introduction against the conclusion or having parallel frames is in her conclusion, which we can look at how she actually concluded. Um, she didn't obviously keep the bullet point structure. You can though, if you want, or another way would be if you, um, begin with a quote, you can end with a different quote or that same quote and reframe it in a different way. Basically nothing should be static. So if you've introduced something at the beginning, it should have changed by the time your paper ends. Um, so I'm not going to read all of this, but another way to conclude is you're talking about a solution, a prediction, or a consequence. And I think I've mentioned these before, but um, yes, with your topics, a lot of them lean toward strongly toward one or the other. A lot of you are mentioning problems and in your introduction, you are portraying some kind of personal connection with that problem or something you've witnessed. Then you're doing a description of said problem. Then you're proposing maybe two solutions and two body paragraphs. You're proposing then an opposition to those solutions or an opposition to, um, one of the two solutions and then your concluding paragraph is kind of again a counter to the counter argument and you can do that stylistically by going back to whatever frame you started with or um, you could do an anecdote here it's really up to you this this is an opportunity to be as creative as possible with um, this paper all right, so that's pretty much it. Um, we didn't have time to go through these. It's very similar to the example I just read you. I will put this online. Otherwise, good luck with showing versus telling. Please let me know how I can help. You're doing a great job of sending me questions and emails. 
and um, there will be no video for Friday, so stick around for Monday's video, and we will start the last week in um, only a couple of days.